my call. I call worship is the spirit song. We join and stand on. It's so awesome to see you here today, to see your smiles and to feel the warmth of God's presence with us. We also welcome those that are watching online today. We're so thankful that we have that option uh, to be able to do that. And we are sorry for blocking that, but we're, we're wanting to get this taken care of. And the scary thing about these tiles is sometimes once a runner starts, that whole thing can just go. And so, you know, uh, I just preached so hard last week, I brought the roof down, you know, so uh, I got to be real careful today. Uh, I hope you noticed, but the new roof on the sanctuary does really look good. But if you were in here when they were roofing, man, it, it was crazy loud and intense. And in that intensity, that happened. So we're going to be working to get that taken care of. But we just don't want anything happening to anybody sitting underneath that. So we had to block that off to protect that there. But we're thankful for the roofs. Tomorrow and tomorrow, maybe tomorrow and Tuesday, they're going to be working on the CLC. And so we should be in a place where we have our roofs taken care of to a pretty good degree uh, in a few days. And so we're thankful finally uh, to get that resolved. The flowers today are given uh, in loving memory of Marilyn and Wilson Godfrey. And uh, for the, some of you can remember the Godfreys, I bet, right? And, and man, you know, isn't it awesome to think of their legacy, you know, here at the church, to think of their legacy here at the church. And to me, that challenges us to make sure we have the baton in our hand while it's our turn and that we're running our race to leave that legacy that we're supposed to leave. And so, so today, today they're, they're given, given uh, in, 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 in loving, loving memory, memory, Marilyn Wilson Godfrey, they're given by CB and Jeannie McGowan. And so we appreciate them doing that and they're beautiful flowers. So know that that's taking place, that, that that's why those are given in there today. We'll let you know that yesterday we had faith in action. Fortunately, the sun was shining. It was still a pretty cold day. We, we gave out about 50 meals. We gave out 35 bags of, of, of the goods that are given and a good number of people that came to take clothes and things like that. We appreciate everybody that works you know, to get, make all that happen. Uh, it takes a, a lot of work, and yet it is a blessing to the community. And so Faith in Action was yesterday. 
This is our meetings week, and so tomorrow night at 6, uh, the ministry team is going to meet. The ministry team is going to be spending some time talking about Palm Sunday, the 10th. On Palm Sunday, April 10th, we will have just one service at 1030, and then we will go down and share a meal together. So uh, be mindful of putting that on your horizon uh, to know that for, for Palm Sunday, but we're going to be doing more planning on that. Tomorrow night at 7, the trustees meet. We're going to continue to discuss our roof, make sure how that's going, uh, and, and getting that finished up. But an important trustees meeting tomorrow night. Hey, Tuesday is going to be a very interesting day because Tuesday, East Texas Food Bank is going to happen at the rodeo grounds. I'm curious here, how many of y'all have signed up to help? I was thinking there were some of the names I thought maybe, because one of the things, I had trouble signing up. I usually feel like I'm okay tech savvy, you know, and Debbie had done it, and she kept going, well, come on, you got to do it. I'm like, I'm trying, you know. So finally, I gave her my phone and said, would you mind? And, and you know, I want to tell you some of her comments about my mentality and stuff. But, yeah, uh, but she took my phone and she got it done. But then when you got it done, there's four, they need 40 volunteers, and they had about 38 at that time, and they list all the volunteers, and it was like roll call at First Methodist. I mean, it is amazing how many people. So Tuesday at 9, the helpers meet. If you're going to be a helper, you can come in the back and find a place to park. And then at 10, they'll open the front gates, and people can come in. This one, who knows how attendance will be on this one, but, but these things are huge when they get going. And then in these days, too, anybody can drive through and you get some good groceries. I mean, I've seen our grocery bill, and I'm looking forward to just when we get done, we get some groceries. And I'm thankful for that in these days with the cost of groceries and things like that. So this is going to be a really great thing on Tuesday east texas food bank at the rodeo grounds if you're coming to help it's at nine if you're just driving through the line you can come at 10 and and get get food and items and it, anybody can do it and it's a great ministry and we're excited to be a part of it tuesday night uh celebrate recovery takes place celebrate recovery starts at six with the dinner seven o'clock they have worship in here and man just a wonderful ministry and we see god working and and that's a blessing to do that on wednesday the choir is still going to meet this week, right? Choir and handbells will meet, and, and exciting the turnout for the handbells and how that's going. Yes, uh, 15 people this past week, so excited for the handbells. This week is spring break, so our youth and children do not meet this week because of spring break, so that will not be happening. Then Thursday, we have finance at 6 and ad board at 7, and that's an important. those are important meetings as well. But also, have you know, Debbie and I, uh, we're going to be going to Guatemala, leaving on Wednesday. Pray, Pray for, for us for safe travels, all the COVID stipulations and all that we have to do to travel. You know, to, and then Friday there's a wedding, and next Sunday I will be preaching there at Monte Shama Church in San Juan, Guatemala. And then Stephanie Berglund, Jason's wife, is going to preach here. And I'm excited for you to get the opportunity to to hear her she has a great heart and she's going to be preaching along in this sermon series the next sermon in that and so i i, I can tell you you're going to be blessed uh, to hear her and as part of her journey just praying for ministry and how god would use her uh would, would be good uh, it was interesting because we've had people involved in two emmaus walks the last two weekend and a friend of mine came at nine uh and 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 she is going to be going to an emmaus walk this weekend it's kind of a different place of it, but but very excited for the Emmaus uh, ministry and that we've had those, and we're looking forward to the fall and and some people going uh, to that in the fall. Any other announcements? A good number there, but any other announcements we need to make today? Uh, if there's no other announcements, we're going to continue in worship by singing God's praise. Let's stand and join together.
of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended to heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. come to a time in our service now where we share our joys and concerns with each other and i don't know about you but you can't even say that without thinking about ukraine you know in the country of ukraine i just have to tell you for me it's been weighing so heavy on my heart you know the city of maripol you know over in the corner and knowing that the people are cut off they won't let them leave they're no have food they don't have water electricity and you feel that and now knowing that they've surrounded kiev and and you know in that is so challenging because all the news they've been interviewing people in Kiev and you almost feel like you know people you know there and to know that it's surrounded and then you so admire their president and his courage I have on my phone a picture of him and his family two precious children beautiful wife and and it sounds to me like they've stayed there with them and and to me you have to think that their lives are in great peril uh, by being surrounded the way they are so uh, when we talk about joys and concerns that just stands out there so heavily and crying out to God, prayer, asking Him to intervene. I have really been claiming Psalm 46, uh, 8 through 10, and in that it says He makes wars to cease, and that's in His Word. It's like, Lord, if you make wars to cease, now would be a good time, you know, to cause a ceasefire, to see so many uh, of the the women and children that have been displaced and your heart just aches, you know, uh, for that displacement. And uh, I, I guess we can all just feel the intensity. There's no, there's no words. We feel the intensity. So that's on our hearts as we gather today. Are there other though joys and concerns as we come together today? So good to have you back today. Been praying for you and known battling through. And uh, there is some other sickness with, with the uh, Morris Morrison fam family with uh, Duke was back, but I know he's been sick, and now Ella was sick, so some different sickness going going along, so we pray for those. Yes, up in the balcony. You don't have any prayer requests up there, do you? Uh, <laughs> yes. Is it this Friday? Because we've been saying the 22nd. Did it get... 18th sorry a bad information for me so i'm glad you said that because i was thinking 20 seconds so this friday i'm glad it's sooner though yes uh definitely been praying for you brother and i'm glad that the surgery will be this friday but that's a lot of words you just used to describe it uh and and we're praying for it to to have its effect and and, and help and we appreciate you still serving in in the meantime until that happens and then we're also thankful for aaron volunteering to step up into some of those gaps too we can always use people to help up there to spread that around uh it's a little bit complicated when you first sit down but once you kind of learn how to do it you know but you do feel the weight there's a lot going on and you do it well thank you chris we appreciate you we're praying for you tim's recovering right uh and definitely been praying for him as well too yes other joys or concerns today we have a young woman that visits our church. She's been coming very faithful at nine and it's such a blessing. And uh, she's getting married in April. And uh, she was sharing some of that today and just so thankful for her. Some of the guests we've had coming to our church recently and getting to share in their lives, you know, and the things of their lives. And 
sometimes you need a good news you know like there's so many intense things uh, and then I'm going to be a part of a wedding on Friday of a young man who's from Colombia, a young woman from Guatemala, and they're going to be going to Colombia to be involved in missions training, training missionaries to go out into Colombia and into Central America. And that's been a part of my journey of life. David Jackson here today. Uh, how, how would you guess how many times we've been to Costa Rica? Four times, and then did you ever go to Guatemala? One time to Guatemala because I know Crystal, Crystal went several, several times. times. Uh, his wife Crystal, but they recently had a grandbaby, and we hadn't hardly seen Crystal since that happened. So, uh, but celebrating the birth of their grandchild and and that that journey, uh, and and his, his wife been numerous mission trips with me as well. I was like joking with her, so I can't wait to call her grandma. Uh, I think she didn't come with him today just because she didn't want to have to deal with that. Uh, but pass that along today. And uh, we, we've had some good, we've seen God do some awesome things uh, in, in our trips down to Costa Rica and, and to Guatemala. But um, excited for that journey this week. If there's no other joys and concerns, let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Father God, we can hardly talk about when we talk about concerns. We can hardly even think about it without thinking of Ukraine today. But Lord, I thank you that as we pray to you that you are an awesome, powerful, mighty God. And we cry out to you on behalf of the Ukrainian people and Ukrainian country for you to supernaturally intervene. According to your word, you say that you make wars to cease, Father God. And so we're asking you to to just supernaturally step in. Lord, uh, whatever that means as far as Putin's heart, his mind, his life, uh, that you would help him to have some sense and reasonability to see the destruction uh, that his ambition is causing. Uh, and that, that, Lord, we pray for the leaders of the world that you would guide them in the decisions that they make. We understand that, that in a way we are in World War III because of the way the world is connected. Uh, but, Lord, we also are just praying. And it's a part of how the world engages this. It's so important. So give wisdom to the leaders. And, Lord, we also see how our lives are connected because these things impact our lives and the things happening in our country. And so, Lord, uh, we need you today. We're crying out to you. Father God, there's health issues involved. We're certainly praying for Chris uh, for a surgery on Friday and for healing and a good recovery and for it to be effective in a tr is its treatment toward what's going on with his neck and that he can have some relief uh, and healing there. We're, we're asking for that now. Lord, even yesterday we had a funeral here in our church and we lift up those that mourn. We especially think of the Ostrike family uh, and, and his family, Lord, the mom, the sister, the, the many friends and family that were here yesterday and that you would comfort those who mourn. Father God, in these days, that they would know your presence. Father God, guide us as we seek to work with our youth and children so that they can know you, so that they can have a faith that's alive and active. Help us to know how to pass the baton of faith from generation to generation to generation. Thank you, Lord, for those that brought us to faith and have nurtured us in the faith. And now, Lord, stir our hearts with that as well. Lord, we thank you for ministries like the Emmaus Walks and for those retreats and for the ones that have happened, the ones that will continue to happen. Father God, thank you for how you work through those. Lord, I thank you for the ministry of the church here. Help us with our buildings to be good stewards. Lord, help us with the finances that are entrusted to us to be wise stewards of the finances in ministry. Father God, thank you for the backpack program. Thank you for faith in action, Lord. And now, Lord, we thank you that the East Texas Food Bank is going to be coming here to the Gladewater area and for the help that that will give, uh, Lord. Again, many different types of illness and sickness, and, and we pray that and for you to move in that because you are Jehovah Jireh, Father God, and you are the Lord, our healer. Lord, I thank you for... Uh, our country is so thankful for, for the safety, the peace that we have, and we don't take it for granted. But we do pray for our leaders as they guide our country. We, we pray that we can be one nation under God, Father, and that, that, that we would, you would help the strife and the misunderstandings to cease and help us walk in a unity, even as we may have differences of opinion, but to walk in a unity in the midst of all of that. I pray for revival in our land, Father God. That, that, that we would come to know you at deeper levels. Lead us forward in that. Hear us now as we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, we don't take up an offering, but we have a basket in the back. If you would like, those of you that are here, if you'd like to give. For those of you watching online, there's numerous ways that you can give online, or you can mail it in. Many bring it by the church, and we're thankful for your faithfulness to the church, and we're also thankful for God's faithfulness to us uh, in the giving. With this in mind, let's stand and sing our praise to God, knowing that He is the one from whom all blessings flow. thankful just for the opportunity to preach the Word of God. I'm thankful to God for the gift of the Word of God. We are in a series that, that started at Lent is going to lead us up to the Easter Sunday. And the title of this series is God's Amazing Love. And last week and this week, we're really focusing on, on how God has given us His Word and what an what a expression of love that is that He's given us, His Word. When we talk about His Word, we can talk about the Bible, His Word. But also, Jesus was known as the Word. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so Jesus you know, uh, was left heaven, was born in a lowly stable. He lived on this earth. He, he died on the cross. Uh, he was resurrected from the dead. He then ascended to heaven, and He will return. How do we know that? And how do we know that? 
The Bible tells us through His Word. And, and so, so that's, that's why, why the Word is real important so we understand who God is, what God is doing, what He's done, what He's going to do. And so Jesus was taught was known as the Word. In Genesis 1, we read how God spoke and it came into being. God's Word is powerful. And, and then Jesus was known as the Word. God has given us His Word. But also, as we read and study the Word of God, we get to the point that we grow in our discernment so that, that we can even know the leading of the Holy Spirit, specific leadings and guidings you know, of the Holy Spirit for how uh, we're supposed to live our lives day by day. And we can know God's Word in a very personal, intimate way for knowing specific direction you know, for His life, and that's His Word. And so, so that's one little bit aspect of a summary of last week and the gift of God's Word. Okay? Uh, last week we also looked at the parable of the sower. In the parable of the sower, the seed is what? The Word of God. And so, you know, the, the parable of the sower, the Word of God is the seed. And the seed, some of it fell on the path. Some, some of it fell in rocky ground. Some, some of it fell on thorny ground. But some of it fell on good soil. And the, and the seed that fell on good soil, bo soil bore fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. There's no doubt for every one of us we want to think we're the good soil. Right? But a part of how we know whether we're the good soil or not is are we bearing fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold? And so, so while we want to be the good soil, we also have to examine our heart and our life to see how we're bearing fruit and, and for God to speak about how we're doing on that front. Today we're going to go into the Gospel of Matthew once again. We're going to go, in to, go to chapter 7 and we're going to read verses 24 through 29. In Matthew, at the beginning of chapter 5, begins the Sermon on the Mount. Okay, so chapter 5 and chapter 6 is the Sermon on the Mount. And this, in chapter 7, also Sermon, Sermon on the Mount. Mount. And now this is kind of the conclusion. Jesus is concluding His preaching on the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so it is, when Jesus had ended these sayings, that the people were astonished at His teaching, for He taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Thanks be to God for the reading of His Word. Amen? Amen. It's, it's, it's become a little bit of a, of a joke or a discussion in the church uh, because I've said numerous times that these are tumultuous days. Okay? And, and, and somebody uh, said, well, aren't all days tumultuous? Like, like are just these days tumultuous? And, and that is interesting because recently I was reading uh, Pat Robertson's book, The Secret Kingdom. I've read it a bunch of times. It's one of my top five books. But it was written in the 80s. And in that book, he was talking about the 80s. And he was describing everything going on in the 80s and talking about how tumultuous the times were. Okay, and so there's a there is a sense in which all the time are tumultuous times. You know what I mean? Like like every age, you can point to things and it's tumultuous. But I want to ask you today: Do these days feel like tumultuous days? In, interesting, you know, just a few nods because I'm I'm feeling it like yes, I mean like yes, these are tumultuous days. That's how I feel uh, as I as I watch things happen, as I pray. I would also ask in relation to our scripture reading, that does it feel like today, like we're in in the middle of a storm, kind of? Does it feel like we're in a storm? Okay, uh, this week on Facebook, there was somebody. It, 
the, a friend of mine from Kansas posted this picture, and, and you know there's been a lot of storms going through, and they took a picture of the sky with one of these storms approaching, and and and, and I mean you could feel the intensity, like, like just looking at the picture, the intensity of the coming storm and the sky. I mean it was almost like angry looking, almost you know just just the sky and the storm. And so, so to me, I do believe that these, these are tumultuous days and that, that, that it's like being in a storm. Uh, but, but maybe you could say that about all days. I, maybe, maybe you can, okay? I have often cited, and I'm going to do it again today, 2 Timothy 3, verse 1, okay? In 2 Timothy 3, 1, it says, But know this, that in the last days, perilous days will come. Know this, in the last days, perilous days will come. Well, you, are these the last days? Every day that we go by is one day closer. I don't know if these are the last days or not, but every day that goes by, we're one day closer to the last days. And this says the last days will be perilous days. I want you to know that uh, in the New King James, that they, they have a little A, like a note up next to perilous, an uh, A. When you're reading your Bible and you see a little letter that has a, a let's say, I'm give it kind of a way, a footnote letter, what does that tell you? There's a source or somewhere, there's going to be a note, there's going to be a note about that down at, the, down at the bottom below. There's going to be a note talking about that word, whether it's a scripture reference or something, a note. So in my, in my New King James, I saw that, a, and, and there's going to be a note. So I looked down, and there was some explanation about the word. I, I was looking at this on uh, gateway.com. How many of y'all know gateway.com? Okay, a couple. So glory to God. And, you know, it's, a, it's a website that you can go to, and you can look at a lot of different translations. But this one, I was looking at New King James. Perilous had an A. And so I went down, I read what it said about that, but here's what was the ticket on this one. On gateway.com, it said, see every English translation about this word. Like in that verse, like score. So I clicked on it, and here's some of the different translations for that word perilous times, that phrase. Here's some of the different translations. Dangerous times. Times of stress. Hard times, trying times, difficult days that will be hard to bear, terrible times, some very hard times. So what are the last days going to be like? Tough. So whatever it is, it's going to be tough, okay? When the last days come, it's going to be like a storm. Like right now, as I look at the world, the way the pandemic, the factions in our country, the propaganda. Hello, wow. We just live in a day of propaganda where you just turn on and people are spousing all kind of different things. It can be depressing at times. And as you go through it all, it can just seem like a, a storm. And there are times when, when this can become almost overwhelming. So today we're going to look at the parable that Jesus breaks speaks about building our house, our lives on the rock versus building our lives on the sand. And we need to know that there's always going to be storms in life. Always. There's going to be storms. It's a part of what living. Jesus in John 16, 33 said, in this world, you will have trouble. Okay. Now then, if you're taking notes on this, these are the two words I want you to remember. Chuck, you ready? All right. These are the two words I want you to remember about this message. In the parable that we read, what are the two main kind of points out of that parable relating to, to the teachings of Jesus? Can you? There, there's two things he talks about. Anybody want to take a shot? Go for it, Chuck. Rock and sand, rock and sand, rock and sand. But but I also want to tell you, hearing, hearing, and doing. Okay? The, the two, two words, words I want you to remember, and we're going to talk about rock and sand in a minute, but the two words are hearing and doing. It says, it says, in this it says, 
but everyone who hears these sayings of mine. Here, here's a question I want to ask you that, that I like percentages, okay? And, and I want to ask you to think in a percentage. This week in the United States, how many, what percentage of people do you think this week in the United States heard the Word of God? At some level, some way, they heard the Word of God. What percentage would you say heard? What percentage would you say didn't hear any of the Word of God this week? So you're going, somebody said 50 50. Okay, 50 50. I can, well, I'm going to come back. What did you say? To hear it, you're thinking that 15 heard it. So that's really a little bit different than, I mean, 50 50. Hey, one of the ways you could, like, go a little bit more with you. Is, is right now they say there's about 46 to 50 percent of people that go to church. When they say that, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know if they go every week. You know what I mean? They're saying that that go to church, and so that that that's what makes me question. Like, like, is it how many in a week? You know what I mean? I think you, if you're talking in a month, maybe you could go up to 50 percent. If you're going in a week, your number. You're not, I mean, we don't know. I don't, I don't have a deal. But he's saying 15. We, I've talked to a number of people about this this week. And, and, and so a number that we had kind of come up with, with through co several conversations, was 75 that hadn't heard the Word of God and 25 that had, or even if we go 50-50, okay, or 85-15. Are you with me, what we're saying? Are you with me? Okay. Let's let, if you'll let me just go with 7525, okay? Let's go with 7525. What what that means is 75% of the people this week didn't hear the word of God. Okay? No exposure didn't this week, this week didn't hear the word of God. I think if you went in a month, I would go I would tend to gravitate toward you if we're talking in a month, okay? But in a week, I'm pretty fit, you know, 25 that have heard it. So this parable is geared toward which group of people? The 25. Okay? The parable is geared to those who hear the Word of God. Okay? And so what is the distinguishing characteristic now, like we're going to talk rock and sand, and the rock and sand only applies to the 25. Are you with me? Because the 75 didn't even hear. They didn't even get the Word of God. And so, so the parable is directed to the people that, really it's for Jesus, it's the people that have just heard the Sermon on the Mount. They've listened to Him preach the Sermon on the Mount. And He's telling them, blessed are those not only that hear, but that do. Okay? And, and, and so, so, this is geared toward the 25. Toward the 25 that hear, are you here today hearing? Hello, are you here today hearing? I hope you don't nod. I don't know. So maybe you're scared to nod. But yeah, you know, I hope you're hearing because that puts you in that 25. But now the question is, what's the difference between the rock and the sand? Doing your behavior. What are you going to do with what you hear? Okay? What are you going to do with what you hear? In your life, what's your pattern, what's your habits for hearing the Word of God? And, 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 and I have quite often, I've talked about laying hold of the Word of God, okay? So hearing the Word of God. What are your patterns for hearing the Word of God? And, and, and in that, we, there's different ways of hearing. And I've talked about laying hold of the Word of God, and, and I'm... I'm trying to be repetitive as a teacher because I want us to get this, okay? I want us to get this. What is the way that we lay hold of the Word of God? Reading the Word of God. Now, you, you, you said praying last week, I think, and I have to tell you, I love praying, but it's not one of the ways with the Word of God, okay? Because I think you said that last week, and it's, it's not one of these, okay? We pray out of the Word of God, yes, but I wouldn't say it's one of the ways that we lay hold of the Word of God per se, unless we're praying the Word of God. Because I've been praying Psalm 46, 8 through 10 to the Lord. And if you get a chance to read those scriptures and pray them, that, that's a good way. And the Word of God comes into praying. But I think you kind of have to already lay hold of it to be ready. So reading, what else for laying hold of the Word of God? 
So hearing, and that would be hearing, hearing the Word of God. And that can be at church, there can be other ways, but hearing the Word of God. This one's really important right here. What would that one be? Well, that's reading. We got reading. Studying. Here we go, following. Reading, studying. If you do those two, if you read and study, pull on that just a minute. You, you can pull decent. Okay. I can lay pretty good hold on that by reading and studying, can I? Okay? So reading and studying, I can lay pretty good hold on it. Then you add hearing, and that can be coming to church. There's some other ways I'm talking about hearing. Then meditating and memorizing. Chuck is going to have the Bible memorized by next Sunday, so we're excited to hear him. The sermon will go a little long how he tells the whole Bible next week because he's working on memorizing the Word of God. Uh, maybe we just start with Genesis 1-1, all right? Or John 3.16, maybe. Yeah, all right. Uh, laying hold of the Word of God. These are some of the ways that we hear the Word of God. Are you with me? These are some of the ways we hear the Word of God. So what I would ask you, what are the patterns, the habits of your life for laying hold of the Word of God? Okay? For hearing the Word of God. Because, because we want to be a part of those that hear and that we hear the Word of God on a regular basis. And then when we hear, then what do we want to do? Okay? In James, in James uh, 1.22, it says, But be doers of the Word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. And, and if we just hear it, and we don't do anything then we're really we're deceiving, deceiving ourselves. But because we, we think, oh, I heard the Word of God. Hey, great. But if, you, know, you know where hearing the Word of God gets you? To the sand. <laughs> and, and so we not only have to hear the Word of God, we also have to be doers of the Word of God. We have to hear and to do. So the focus of this sermon is on hearing and upon doing. Okay. Now then, uh, as, a, as a part of the sermon today about the hearing and doing, what, what, what I want to challenge you today is, is ultimately I want to challenge you to take a step forward, first of all, in your hearing the Word of God, okay? And then, then by God's guidance, to take a step forward in the doing, okay? So, to think about how you hear the Word of God in a week, and to think about taking a step forward in your hearing. I want you to know that uh, Debbie, Debbie, I, I love my wife Debbie, and, and I'm so thankful and blessed she loves me. And, and so she's been saying we need to do more things together, okay? And a part of that is studying the Word more together. So one of the things that we did is, is when, when we're traveling or doing different things, uh, Don't ever, that's challenge of looking at your phone. <laughs> the nursery workers left because there weren't any kids, so she's gone. So just sorry, that's why looking at your phone is not good, okay? Okay, now then, Debbie and I, on, on, on studying the Word of God, Andy Stanley has an app called Your Move. Andy Stanley is a really awesome preacher, and he has an app called Your Move. And so Debbie and I, as we travel or something, we pull up that app and we'll listen to him preach. And here's what's awesome about Andy Stanley. He preaches a really awesome sermon in 20 minutes. And so on his app, all these different sermons, they're 20 minutes. And so one of the things you can pray for Bud is be like Andy. Okay? Be like Andy. But you can get that app, and, and, and you can, he has a lot of really good sermons, and that's hearing the Word of God. So we said coming to church, but it's also wild. God's Word can come to us a bunch of different ways. Also, there's another gentleman named Bruce Wilkinson, uh, and Bruce Wilkinson is also a really awesome teacher. And Debbie and I have been listening to some of his teachings, but his teachings are an hour to two hours. And so I'm thinking, be like Bruce. Help him, Lord. <laughs> Debbie and I can't even, like, we don't watch a whole one at one time. We watch, you know, 30 or 40 minutes. His are an hour to two hours. Way more in depth going into the Greek and the stuff like that. So Bruce Wilkinson. So for us, our step forward that we've kind of taken together are listening to some Andy Stanley 
you know, messages or listen to Bruce Wilkinson. Another thing is learning to use Bible Gateway, you know, on your computer to look stuff up and do some study there. I think last Sunday I mentioned a, a, a Bible app. Did anybody remember the other Bible app I mentioned? Blue. Blue Letter Bible. Okay. Blue Letter Bible. The Blue Letter Bible app is a little bit more complicated to learn to use, but that's because you're accessing this whole library of stuff. How many of you are familiar with Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible? Anybody else has a couple? TC, how much do you think that Strong's Concordance weighs? Yeah, it's big, isn't it? Five to ten pounds, maybe, a book. It's on your shelf, and to pull it off, it's, it's this big reference book. It's about, Dave, five to ten pounds, maybe. Pretty heavy. It's not one you're going to carry with you to church, is it? And yet it's really wild because through the Blue Letter Bible app, you can access Strong's Exhaustive Concordance and you just have it on your phone. It's with you everywhere you go. And so if you learn to, to use that, it's a great reference. And so, so going deeper in God's Word uh, in, in the hearing. And then as we go deeper in God's Word, what I would pray is that it would sensitize our hearts to that voice of God for those specific instructions to carry us forward in our doing. Like, like what does God want us to do? Okay? What is the mission statement of our church? Partnering with God in transforming people into fully devoted disciples of Jesus for the glory of God. Okay? And so, so we would hope that God would lead us forward in being fully devoted disciples of Jesus who are also involved in making fully devoted disciples of Jesus. So, so we hear the Word through reading, study, hearing, memorizing, meditating. We hear the Word. We, we develop our spiritual hearing. God leads us by His Holy Spirit and we take another step forward in the doing of His Word. So take a step forward in the hearing. Take a step forward in the doing. Here, here's, here's, what, here's what this all leads us to is to this point, okay? As we move toward the end times... How is life going to be? Perilous, difficult, dangerous, hard times. Did you hear the Bible say that, right? Okay. One of the things as I'm listening to different preachers and teachers of the Word of God, one of the things I'm hearing pretty steadily is that as we move toward the end times, a mediocre, lukewarm, kind of faith is not going to be enough. Hello, church? A mediocre, lukewarm kind of faith is not going to be enough. It's like building your house on the sand. And that, that there, there's some storms coming. we got some storms right now, and who knows what that level of that is and how they compare. But every day that goes by, we're moving more toward the last days. And the last days are going to be perilous, stressful, difficult. And so for us as Christians, we need to be hearing the Word of God, doing the Word of God. We need to be pressing forward in our faith so that our faith is strong enough so that when the storms come, that, that we have a faith that's built on the rock. Okay? And, and so, so one of the things as a, as, a, as a preacher today, God like puts this on my heart to preach to His people. You're here today hearing the Word of God. And, and the question is, is not to just be a hearer, but then also to be a what? A doer. If you're just a hearer of the Word of God, you're building your life on the sand. If you just hear the Word of God and you say, oh preacher, that was so good. My favorite. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Well, we enjoyed it. Let's go to the movies. You know, I, I hope that I come with a little conviction that, man, I didn't, didn't man, so I, I don't mind that saying stepped on my toes or, you know, I'd rather something like that than I enjoyed it. Because it's not about whether we enjoy it or not. we got to hear it to the point that we hear it, that it motivates us to do something because it's not until we do something that we start getting over to the rock. Are you with me? So, so it's awesome that you're here. It's awesome that there's people watching online and we need to hear the Word of God. But if we hear the Word of God to get over to the rock, what do we have to do? Something. <laughs> something. 
Okay, now then, here's what I need you to, to, to get. You're hearing the Word of God today. Let's say you're part of the 50% that's hearing or the 75 or the 25% that's hearing or you're part of the 15% that's hearing. But what does that leave out in the world? Hello? That leaves 50%, 75%, or 85% of the people that aren't even hearing the Word. Hello? Do you they see why things are going to be bad and worse and, and things like that? Okay, I this week was having lunch with, with the guy that takes discipleship seriously. And he said he's discipling, discipling a young couple. They're in their early 40s. They've been married a good number of years. They have two children. And, and they are, are, are right at about to split up and get a divorce. And he is challenging them. That, that that's that's not what they're supposed to do. Okay? Here's, here's, here's one of the lies that come into this situation. Something that's always said about the children. When people are about to get a divorce, what do they say about the kids? They'll be okay. They'll adjust. They'll be okay. They'll adjust. Man, I've worked with youth for 40-something years. And I'm telling you, divorce is hard on kids. And, 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 and they'll, they'll survive or they'll live. Yeah, they'll live. I mean, you know, but, 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 but this is going to impact them and it's going to impact their lives. You, you know, I have to tell you, I like the Hallmark Channel. I'm not scared to admit it. I like the Hallmark Channel. And, and I hope all of us like a love story. Okay? Right? Like a love story. I come to this couple and I want to say to this couple... Write a love story in the middle of this difficult, challenging time. Now, come together and figure out how to make a heroic move and write a love story. Anybody can get a divorce, but how about you do something different and write a love story, but you're not going to be able to do it on your own. You need God. You need His Word to help you know how to build your marriage, to hold your family together, to go forward. Man, Debbie and I this past week watched the movie American Underdog. Okay? And, and if you haven't seen that movie, I highly recommend it. It's the true story of Kurt Warner and, and, and him in his journey to being Super Bowl MVP around the year 2000. It is an amazing story. It's a, basically a Christian movie, really pretty much. But, but he and Brenda, in their lives, they had some rough times. I mean some rough times. There was a time they were separated. Uh, for for a bit of time, you know, uh, and 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 their journey their journey is very real. Okay, it's very real. It's not, but but that reality of them staying together to get to the other side, and 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 it's an awesome testimony to the glory of God. Okay, but what we here today have to realize we are in that percentage that we're hearing the word of God, and out in the world there's this huge percentage. That, that is not, not even hearing, hearing the word of God. God. And, and that's, that's why we have to be representing our Lord and our Master going out into the world to find the ways that God would lead us to take His word and His love and His grace out into the world. Are you with me? Okay. These first two in this series, God's Amazing Grace, these first two sermons have been about the word of God. The seed doing something so we're building on the rock. But next week, we're going to talk about the, the, the shepherd that left the 99 and the God's love, God's amazing love that pursues the least, the last, and the lost. And that's what God invites us into as we do the Word. The challenge today when we leave, however what your patterns, your habits are for the Word of God, is to take one step further in how, how you read and take, take whatever, whatever the Word of God. God. And then, and then let, let God, God guide, guide you by His Spirit in that, that next step of doing whatever that is whenever that comes. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, I thank You for the truth of Your Word. I thank You for the gift of Your Word. I thank You for the many ways that Your Word comes to us, but especially how Your Word comes to us through the Bible. And Father God, we want to be the people that build their lives on the rock. And that's not just hearing your word, but it's also then doing your word. And Lord, thank you for the Sermon on the Mount and all that comes before uh, this when Jesus closes by, by giving this parable, this example. 
Lord, today I thank you for every person in the sanctuary. I thank you for those that are watching online. Those around the world that, that are hearing your word in churches across the world today. But Lord, help us, not, help us not to be hearers only, but also doers. In Jesus' name and for your glory. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's stand today and we're going to close and, and be seeking the Lord even in our hearts to know how to walk this out as we leave into this week. those of you watching online as well but also when we talk about being Christ family my heart really extends like the people in Ukraine thinking of them they're a part of this people all across the world it's broader than than just us here in this sanctuary when we declare this who are we we are Christ family and we have come to worship the Lord and to give him praise Thank you, Lord God, for the way you love us. We ask you now to lead us by your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Lord, lead us by your Holy Spirit that we be hearers of your word, but not just hearers only, but doers for the sake of the world and for your glory. Let's go forth in his name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Be blessed as you go today.